public service announcement. This is a public service announcement. What you're about to listen to may make you yell, shout, smile, and even laugh out loud. Youth baseball players, coaches, and fans join the Slide Podcast crew on their journey to make baseball fun, fun again. Hear stories from players of all ages, plus tips and tricks from coaches and scouts. Now, if you're ready, give us a loud play. There we go. Welcome back to the Slide Podcast. I am your host, Coach Aaron, and Jen is joining us tonight. How are you doing, ma'am? I am. Today was the Mondayest Tuesday ever. It is Tuesday, right? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Oh, it yeah? is a rough day at work. Yeah. Living yeah. The, the adult life. Like, I wish I could go back to those baseball and softball days and just play in the dirt. I know, right? Like, kids listening, yeah. they, they have no idea what a Monday Tuesday is. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Not at all. Not at all. And yeah, what about also, you? How are- well, we're also Sorry. joined with uh, Logan, the lowdown, one of our field reporters out of Fort Pierce, Florida. How are you doing, sir? Good today. I'm Good. Good. You, uh, you're out on spring break, right? Yes. Today's you- my last day of spring break. Well, what have you been doing this whole spring break? Um, went to go see my brother uh, play in college. Um, mm-hmm. and then mostly just uh sleeping in and video games. Hey, you know what? A spring break. Do what yes. you want to do. <laughs> do what you want to do. Now I have to say, I make Jace like get up, and sometimes I just kick him out of the house. I'm like, look, you can go somewhere else, but you're not gonna be here laying around. So. <laughs> I'm just I'm just that dad. So anyway, yeah, Jen. So um, softball started um, first few games didn't go quite like you wanted to. How's things going now? Um, well, since we are also on spring break, I let the kids take the week off. We'll start back on Sunday with another practice and then we've got games next week. Um, we scrimmaged. Uh, we had a local tournament. And we scrimmaged one team, played well. I thought we hit. This is six under softball, everybody. So, like, no college recruiters are out there or anything. So, (laughs) um, we hit the ball a lot better than we played defense. Stopping the ball and throwing it was a challenge. Um, But we'll get them next time. Uh, I am really looking forward to this season. Last year, I moved people around. I, I basically just said... Yeah, it doesn't matter if we win or lose. I just want to give people experience. This year, I'm in it to win it. I am not. I'm putting people where they belong and making the lineup the way it should be. And I expect to win the tournament this year. <laughs> I, I can around. hear Coach Jen coming out in you. Right I am now. messing around. Yep, yep. We'll get them next time. That was funny. So that was like a run on <laughs> sentence, and you added, "We'll get them Sorry. next time." Right in there. That was <laughs> that was perfect, Coach Jen, right there. So. Oh, well, you know what? You mentioned giving kids off for spring break. I am coaching flag football. I think everybody knows that by now. And these kids don't get no breaks. Like, they get enough break as it is. Like, come on now. It's first or last. That's That's right. right. We're going to show up. No, I'm just kidding. This week was voluntary practices. And so, I mean, we had everybody but two kids yesterday. So, we got our first scrimmage tomorrow. So, I'm doing it a little bit different. Um I, I don't know if we even want to get into all of it, but I'm teaching them actually the NFL play calls and teaching, yeah. and teaching them like route structure. And we've spent two weeks going through and learning routes. And now we're, awesome. we're now we're building in plays and mm-hmm. um, it's so fun. It's yeah. So fun. And there's not a whole lot of coaches in flag football in that at that age that are doing it. So I think you'll really see the fruits of your labor. But one thing, Colton played flag football last year, and something that I really appreciate about his coach is he did the same thing. Mm-hmm. They had armbands. All the kids had armbands. And what he would do is he would make their play sheets, right? He'd call whatever play it was, and they would have certain plays at the beginning of the season that were blacked out, and they had to – they had to achieve certain milestones to unlock oh, the next play. I like that. Which I thought was really cool. He was a, um, you probably know who he is. He's a, a video game developer. So that's kind of what he modeled that after. He knows kids love achievements. Video, yeah. Most video games and then being able to unlock the next level. So that's how he would entice them to do well and in, and unlock the next level. I thought that was really uh, like creative that. of him. I but will yeah. say I integrated uh giving out football cards yeah. to my players. So in baseball, I was giving out baseball cards. Got that from Coach Ball Game. Love you to death, dude. Um, 
and uh, it works. It works. So I like that you brought that over to the football. Um, yeah, why not? Coaches as well. That's cool. Listen, and I got to ask the parents something here. And Jen, I want your feedback too. So look, flag football is supposed to be fun, right? Yes. Yes. That was easy. That was easy. Yeah, that was a hard, hard question. Uh, no, <laughs> here's the here's the real one. All right, so you get a flag if you celebrate, right? In NFL, you mean? Uh uh-uh. uh In flag, can't celebrate in flag. Really? Really? Mm mm-hmm. mm. Yeah. So is that a, a new sport, rule? I don't know. A sun sportsman like penalty. But here's what I told the kid yesterday. We're gonna celebrate. I don't That's even odd. I don't even care about a five yard penalty. If anything, that gives me more room to, to make a play. Throw, the, throw the football in the end zone for the two point. So I we're feel gonna like celebrate. That's new. Because when, when Colton was playing, I mean, they didn't overly celebrate, but they did a chest bump and like a little, you know, yeah. whatever. Well look, I want them dancing. I want some team like celebrations, like somebody scores, we all run out there and we get in a line like a roller coaster or something. And look, I was a Dolphins fan this past year. They were the ones that like perfected the end zone celebrations. And I told the other coaches, I was like, we can't celebrate, can we? And they were like, no, no, no. I was like, well, we are. I was like, listen, here's what I want. And I told the team this, and I'm going to shut up, and we're going to get to our guest. As I said, we may win, we may lose. But as long as we're having fun, that's all I care about. Plus, if we get beat, I want the other team saying winning was fun, but it looks like it's even more fun to be on that team. And that's what I want. That's what I want. All right. Enough of our rambling. We have spent seven minutes talking about our stuff. And so today we are joined with two gentlemen out of San Diego, California. And uh, Logan, are you crunching peanuts? No, it's Jesse. Oh, (laughs) I wasn't sure. Anyway, uh, we are joined today by a gentleman named Jesse Maddox. How are you doing, sir? Doing good. What about you? I'm doing great, man. Even better since I'm sitting here with you guys. And we are also joined with the man, Levi. What's up, dude? What's up? Very nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys for being interested in coming on the show. Now, which one of you two is the biggest talker? Uh, probably Jesse. Jesse. He, he, he said you're I'm, the talker. Well, are you, are, are you, is, it, Le, is Levi quiet? Well, in the dugout, if something happens, I'll be the one to say something, that's for sure. Okay. That's my kind of dude right there. All right. So uh, I want to give both of you guys a chance to tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, Tell us who you play for, how long you played ball, um, all that fun stuff. And then what's your favorite cereal? Yeah, let's go with cereal. Cereal is always classic, Jim. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys ready? Jesse, let's hear you, bud. Uh, definitely Captain Crunch, but not, but not, not the, not the, not the all berries or just the ones that are regular. The, the mm-hmm. mix, the mix, it's the best one. Gotcha. Good answer. Good. I like it. I like it. All right, tell us who you are, where you're from, who you play with. I'm Jesse Maddox. I'm 12 years old. I'm in San Diego, California, and I play with Let Them Play 12 e National. Mm, let them play. I wonder if anybody's heard of Let Them Play. All right, Levi, what about you? Um, my favorite cereal, to be honest, I'm not a huge cereal guy. I love muffins in the morning and banana. I love eating muffins and banana. But if I had to choose a cereal, I'd probably choose like just classic Cheerios or Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay. Yes. Now, are you eating, are you eating like the little mini muffins or are you eating like a full size muffin? No, it was a, like a chocolate muffin. Oh, that's me all day, dude. <laughs> that's me. Now, I love some cereal. I've said it before on the show. I love some Fruity Pebbles because you can't go wrong. With, I mean, there's just so many flavors in your mouth. It's just so they amazing. just get soggy too quick for me. That's yes. You, they're good. They're good. You can't just sit I around like, and look at them. you got to eat. I know. you got to eat them quick. I don't know. All means, right, Levi, where like are you them. from? Like All that fun. So how old are you? My name is Levi Wolf. I'm 12 years old. I live in San Diego, California. Uh, I play with Let Them Play National 12 U. And yeah. Very cool. All right. So both you guys play with an organization called Let Them Play. Yeah. Which one of you two can tell and describe to our listeners what exactly that means? Uh, I can. 
All right, Jesse, well, you up, bud? I mean, it's it's sort of in the name. Like, let them play. You don't. They don't. Coach isn't too controlling. You don't have many rules. Like, for example, we we just we just steal. We don't have any signs. They just let us play, like the name says. Hmm. But the kids mostly just run the show there. Because after all, sure I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure our whole goal of let them play is just nobody – Coach Eric says this a lot. Nobody's going to out-baseball us, which I think means it's like nobody's ever going to outwork us, out – outplay us and we're going to play the baseball the right way and have fun while doing it and mm. that's just different than most programs and, and obviously i know coach burns a little bit and that's uh that's coach burns um now how long have you guys uh been playing for let them play jesse you can go first uh once it's July, which is my birthday. Uh, be about one year from then. Awesome. Back in Futures, uh, Eleven U Invitational for USA last year. As first major tournament and pretty much all tournament that I played with this team. Wow. Okay. Um, now, given the players' control over a team like that, you must not win a lot. Oh, we win all the time. But how? Your coaches are letting you guys do it. Like, that's just unfathomable. Bo, bo, bo. I don't know if I said that right. Did I say that right, Jen? Unfathomable. Unfathom- unfathomable. Unthab- well, un- just, no, because they, just because they might not uh, give us help like that in the games doesn't mean that they're not doing it pregame or after game or in between innings or uh, practices. They're giving us their best so we can play our best when we don't have them in the future. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I've heard this. Um, I've heard this for a few years now is you coach in practice, right? That's where the coach really shows up is in practice in a game. They should just be your biggest fans because at that point in time, it's not coaching. You're not in a coaching mood right now. Like you, you should be in total support mode. So I think that plays right along with that. Levi, what's your take on it, man? I mean, I just think that we have, whatever we do, just we just have, always have a purpose of what we're doing. And if wherever all of our guys that are on our team are just we all we all know what we we came to do and we all are either mature enough or know what we have to do pre-game post-game during the game i don't need that stuff and then they just have my main goal whenever i play especially just have fun i it's my one mentality whenever i play and so i feel like as long as people can do that this is and gel as a team that's what that's what makes great teams you know jenna i got one thing to say and i'm gonna turn it over to you but okay. you know that the last e in the slide you know we've always used it as excitement i think mm-hmm. we need to change it to empower <clears throat> because i think that's an example of what these coaches do for these kids is they empower them to make decisions to make the best decisions for the team um i mean and that's that's huge for both of you guys. I mean, because when you start talking to recruiters, if you haven't yet, but when you start, like, that's what they want to see. They want to see leaders, like, yeah. you know, someone that's got courage that can, you know, speak up when someone needs to speak up, you know, to help lead your teammates through it. And it sounds like you got a whole team full of leaders. So that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. All right, Jen, you said, you're up. You guys are in 12 U. Is that what you said? Yep. Okay. So with um, with the league that you're or the team that you play for, do they have like eight U and ten U as well that are let them play? Um, it- I think we have a ten U team, but it's mostly out of Arizona, and we have a fourteen year old team that's mostly from Southern California. Okay. Have you ever played for another coach that's not? of that philosophy of let them play and talk about like the difference between what you feel like is beneficial with the way that you're coached now versus then I'll let Jesse go first. Um, 
I've only been on two travel teams my whole life, and that was this one, and then a team that I used to be on when I was like nine through eleven, and it was called the San Diego Hustle. And I played against oh, yeah. I've played against Levi before on that team because San Diego <laughs> tournaments and mm-hmm. uh, our coach. I mean, great, it's a great guy. <laughs> He now he coaches Grossmont High School. He, I definitely wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for him. But and his philosophy was almost the complete opposite. I mean, he okay. he when you, you did something wrong, he told you, you did it wrong. But he didn't just tell you that you did it wrong. He told you what to do better. He was he was he was growth mindset. But he would definitely stick it to you when you did something wrong. Growth mindset, dude. You're twelve. I learned that. I learned, I learned that in school. I learned that in school. Yeah, they're teaching me right. Wow. Okay. I had to do a whole presentation about growth mindset versus fixed mindset. Wow, that's uh, that's impressive, dude. I like that. I like hey that imp- that applies all throughout life, man. That's yeah. uh, that's good stuff. <clears throat> Levi, what, what about, about you? Yeah. No, I think I have a little. I've played a travel ball a little longer than Jesse, but mm-hmm. um, I've played for three or four teams in total. I've guest played for a lot of teams. I know there's just nothing. Don't mean to say this in a bad way, but all the other coaches I've played for, they're all they all have different philosophies and mm-hmm. different than Coach Eric and Coach Eric's philosophy. Falafel, falafel, unfathomable. Yeah, philosophy. Oh, sorry, his philosophy. So yeah. philosophy is uh, just it's just really good, and all the other coaches I've played for all have different stuff that they think and what whatever they tell you and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just. Whatever I've learned, just adapt to whatever they're doing, and yeah, just yeah, just listen adapt. to the coach. Listen to the coach. Well, I, look, I, I think that's one of the things that we talked about with Coach Rack last week was, you know, you're going to have different coaches, you know, throughout your life. Some you may have coaches that you're not quite fond of. Um, and then you're going to have the Eric Burns's of the world. And uh, you know what? You can learn something from both. Even the ones that you're not fond of, you can still learn things from them. So, that again, growth mindset. Have a growth mindset. I'm still impressed. We're talking about growth mindset. I know. With 12-year-olds. I uh-huh. started early, stuff. though. All right. Well, look, Logan, I'm going to you up next. Get, 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 get ready. And uh, let me ask you guys this. How do you get on this team? Like, it sounds like you should have a waiting list. Like, how, how do you how do you make it to let them play? Here, I'll go first, Levi. Yeah. So, my story is a lot different than most people's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't know how Levi got on the team. Not in like a bad <laughs> way. Like, I, I, not in not, that, not a bad way. Like, I actually don't know how he got on the team. But how I got on the team is, I I went to the only. 18 made it for the U- for the USA team mm-hmm. and there was I think 26 people that tried out so I went there and they and Biscuit Burns was there Eric Burns' mm-hmm. son so Eric was there and he saw me and then I definitely wasn't the best one out there so he just so he saw me as a prospect a person to get better and he noticed I wasn't on a big national team yet so he was like I want that guy and he grabbed me off of there and then I played the tournament in futures with them, and then I've been on the team since, and I've gotten a lot better with through his coaching. Freaking love it! I know. Like, that's that's the kind of stuff that like everybody should hear right there. I love it, Levi. How'd you get there? I mean, I so I live close to some of the a lot of the fourteen year old kids for the, the Southern California team, mm-hmm. and mostly 
So his uh, Troy Gloss's son Ty, he's a he was a he lives down here mm-hmm. for he moved to Fresno for now, but he so I was friends with him and stuff, and we I went to a lot of practices at the at their house or whatever, and Coach Eric came down for a couple times. Just we were saw him, and then he just started to know me more. And then I played a couple tournaments before the future thing Jesse was talking about, and just and just. Made a decision as I I played up my whole life. I played an age group up with my Riptide team for mm-hmm. three, four years. So it was a decision to go back down to 12U or go to 13U. And with going to 12U was a possibility to join this team. And I took the opportunity and just enjoyed it. I like that too. You know, I, that says something about your parents. Because, look, the reason why we put you in a, an age division higher is to help increase the level of competition because every parent's got to keep up with all the other parents and all the other nonsense that goes on, but they let you make the decision, and I think that is you, – you two are, I would almost say, getting close to grown men personality here. This is uh, – yeah, Jess, go ahead. I'd, I'd just like to add on what Levi hey, said. Hey, look, just, just for everyone – Y'all don't have to raise your hand. Just speak up. Sometimes I just don't <laughs> stop, and you can just interrupt me. So All right, that's true. Go ahead. But uh, to add on to what Levi said, uh, I also played up my whole life, and uh, but I didn't play up because my parents thought it would be a higher competition. Like mm-hmm. my my team was like we didn't have any other teams. The time is thirteen. Oh, okay. Years. So like <clears throat> started from the bottom. You know what gotcha. I'm saying. Yeah, we didn't. So I just I've been playing up and I didn't even know I was playing up the whole time. I had no clue that (laughs) I had no clue that I could play a younger age. I just got thrown straight in there and I just started playing and performing well. And then I went to USA Trout and then made that team. And then that's that's incredible. That's that's awesome. Logan. Evan's doing hat low down the low down. What you got for these dudes? Um, I have a question. Uh, um, let them play. Um, so, um, so I got that. Um, that that the coaches just let you guys play in the game. Like, do the coaches still like tell you where to tell you what to do in the games it, instead of like, like instead of like hitting or or like infield or like stealing instead of signs? Like, do they? Um, do they like tell you like where to go still, or do you guys just do that? Uh, Levi, you got this one. Yeah, it's funny. Coach Eric likes to bring a lot of coaches to different tournaments. Our last tournament, we had like we had two coaches that we just never knew before or whatever. So he's so we get a bunch of different perspectives and stuff. I say mostly what we like work on as a team and what we do is a lot of approaches and mindsets like stuff when and to answer your question about the uh like he they still tell us like waving going to third like you're rounding second and wave to go to third or half or whatever still do that and stuff it's just mostly approaches and stuff that i think that are really good for us and if you're able to apply that and use that it's very helpful yeah i think like he's and there's actually a, a company out brian uh brandon guyer runs it but it's a mental mindset or major league mindset and that's almost like describes what you guys are going through like i'm sure and, and just for everyone listening Coach Eric is Eric Burns, um, MLB player for the Oakland A's, the Diamondbacks, um, previous coach of the Savannah Bananas. Like, this dude's legit, like 100% a baller. So, like, I think it's amazing to hear about, like, you know, this this guy giving back to kids the way he is. I think that's incredible. So, um, all right. So now we get to talk about each other. Um, Jesse, what, what, when you think about Levi, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I think he knows what I'm going to say. I think, <laughs> I, 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 I think, I think he's apple. a little scared. I right think now. apples. I think you apples. Think apples? <laughs> yeah, look at story. him. He knows. He knows. Every right. time, 
in the dugout. He's got his little he's got his little like fanny pack full of snacks. He's always got <laughs> apples. He's always got apples to give for everyone. Oh, and I love now, that. Do you cut them up? Do you cut them up for everyone? Yeah, they're freshly freshly sliced for it to give wow. to everyone. Oh, yeah. Tell them about we the learned, red ones, Levi. We we learned a couple of years ago. Just <laughs> I've ever since I've always loved apples or whatever, and we like a couple of years ago we figured out. So we started putting like a whole bag of apples and we put lemons inside of them, and we like squeeze them and it makes them taste like more sour and keeps them like not turning brown. That's really, good. even the red yeah. apples. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it was really interesting and. I've always brought apples to games and share with team and they're just, they love them. That's, that's, that's solid right there, dude. That's a solid. Yeah. Now you get to tell us what you think about with Jesse. I think whenever I think of Jesse, I think emotions. <laughs> okay. Whenever right. just, <laughs> it's funny when just all the emotions he has to when he's pitching, to when he's feeling, to when he's feeling like, just when he's feeling dedicated or stuff. Yeah, and he's locked like, in. He's like, I'm. He's like, I'm gonna take this picture like 450. Where I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw 80 right down the pipe to this guy. Just like <laughs> when he's all the different emotions he has, it just what makes him special and unique. Special, yeah, yeah. Aww, <laughs> special in a good that. way, though, Jesse. Yeah, dude. All right. So now I got a question about that. So catch that, Logan. Got a question on that one. So um, describe the different versions of Jesse. Jesse. Uh, Let Jesse do this one. The, you can right. talk. You can even talk in third person if you wanted to. Like, so the Jesse infield, this is how we approach And the Jesse batting, I, I'm just kidding. That, that reminds me of Eric Burns, but <laughs> go ahead. Uh, let me think. So... I'll I'll go through I'll go through how I'll feel in a championship game because I always I pitch the championship game every time so okay start of the game uh we'll say we're visitors fresh mindset ready to hit time to pitch up normal right we're, we'll pretend I we'll pretend I single up the middle okay I'm like. All right, yeah, let's go. But then I'm then I but I, you know how you can let the 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 bad things go quickly. I let the good things go even quicker. I'm immediately like, all right, I'm gonna get up there and now I'm gonna steal second and third base. First pitches on both, both, and then but now on the pitching side. Normally I'll strike out the first two batters, then I'll probably walk walk the the next guy, and then probably like, like a ground purpose? ball. Like on purpose, you walk. No, I'm, guy? I'm, I, even I'm admitting I'm wild. I can't throw strikes sometimes. I just can't do hey, it sometimes. Look, dude, Charlie Sheen was wild thing. That's okay, dude. Let's go. <laughs> so, so on the on the mound, you you're like I'm about to mow this dude down. Yeah, I always have confidence on the mound. But now let's talk about when things aren't going so well. Okay. When things aren't going so well, I start to to throw it throw it harder. I start to throw it harder. Instead of being, dang it, I didn't get that one. I'm like, since you got me this time, I'm getting your friend even harder. Just on like on how uh, in our last tournament, someone hit a home run off of me in the first inning. So second inning, I took his boy deep. I took his boy deep. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Oh. I like it. I like it. That's uh, yeah. I got. I. I. Levi's right about that. I got mixed personalities for sure. Hey, dude. Jesse, do you know what the yips are? Oh yeah, I get them get sometimes. The yips? Yeah. Really? That's a uh, real thing. Talk, talking about mindset. I'm trying to think. Last time I had them, uh, I was. I actually this is one of the best games I've ever pitched, but it was against 101 Elite back in West Covina, and mm-hmm. I was like, all right, this team's gonna be pretty good. I got to pitch my A game. And I was, and it's a bunch of my friends. Uh, I was facing against their select select fest dude, Ashton Aguilar, who was former let them play from Eleven U. Mm-hmm. I wasn't on the team though, but and I was like, all right, these guys are gonna be good. I gotta go in there. I gotta bring my A game. And then it, I was feeling the pressure. Like the first at bat, I'm pretty sure I walked the first guy. 
little wild. Felt I was my confidence wasn't fully there, but pushed through it and I pitched something like thirteen strikeouts, one hit, no allowed runs through the whole game. Probably the best game I pitched. Wow. Now I, I gotta go back to what you said earlier. Do you throw eighty? That I I, I could throw I I bet I could because I've been stuck at seventy seven for the last like six months. And I've gotten stronger, so I'm sure I could, but shaking your head. You're acting like 77 slow. He, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's yeah. true. That, that's okay. Just, but like, I expect more out of myself. All of the, all the, the work I've been getting to throw harder. I need to hit that 80 mark. It's coming at the end of the season. I'm, I'm telling you now it's coming. Dude, I love it. Like, it's like we, we're sitting here you, talking to like some serious ballers here. You, We are, but you have to understand how much more growing you have to do. And I know that you're ready to be like there at this at that 90, 95. I know you want to be there, but you have so much growing left to do. So treat your body well. Take care, take care of yourself. Sleep good. Sleep 12 hours if you want to, especially on spring break. Like stay in the bed, rest, let your body do its thing when it's recovering. Drink a lot of water, eat a lot of protein. You'll get there. Like you're putting the work in. It's obvious. Jen, should I be sleeping 12 hours? No, you're not a growing boy. How, well, I mean, what is it? The eight hour rule for me? I mean, seven to eight would be great. Man, 12 but I don't be, think you. 12 would be no, awesome. There's no way. The last time I did that, I was probably 12 or 13. And then here comes my dad, like, pulling the covers off of me. Get out of bed. Yeah. Logan, do you know what the yips are? Yes, I have them each game. You, you what now? I have them, um, like, each game and then towards the middle. Then I'm just fine. It's, it's the weirdest thing. Aaron, have you ever had them? I didn't play long. I, I, I didn't, I oh didn't my play gosh. long enough to have them. I actually, hell, like, my whole career was the yips. So... <laughs> It's like you all of a sudden have zero control over your own body. It's so wild. No, I don't think I ever got them. Oh man, that's uh, it's, it doesn't it's sound fun. Mental. I, I've heard you talk to a lot of people about it, and yeah, uh, yeah. Le- Levi, what position do you play? Positions? Uh, I play first base, pitcher, and then sometimes outfield, but mostly first base first and pitcher. pitcher. Are you lefty? Yeah. Awesome. So is Jesse. Okay. Oh, wow. Two lefty. lefties on the staff. Yeah, we're both lefty hitter and pitcher. There you go. Mm-hmm. Now, which one's the better pitcher? Uh-oh, I mean, Jesse. This is an honest, blunt question. Who? Jesse? Probably me, but Levi's way more accurate. Like, way more accurate. But... But when I but when I can throw strikes, it's it's hard to it's hard to hit. Definitely hard to hit when I can. Throw when strikes. we both have different, like, like yeah, we, we, both, we like we have different jobs. It's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Different jobs, I should say. Also, he just like if you there's multiple different like strengths we have, like pitching. That's like, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that that's honestly yeah. like when I ask that question, it's more so for just the giggles. But you're exactly right. Everybody plays a different role on a baseball team. And that's what makes baseball so freaking awesome. Well, uh, uh, the, th- the thing is, I mean, I, I can't I literally can't pitch unless Levi pitches, which means that what I'm trying to say is if Levi doesn't pitch good, then I can't pitch good. Because of he's pitching the semifinal game every time, and if we can't we can't get to me pitching a championship game if Levi doesn't do what he normally does, where he shoves on the semifinal game to get me in the championship game. Yeah. Levi, you carrying a lot of weight there, bud. Hmm? Every pitcher yeah. carries a lot of weight. I mean, I'm gonna tell you that's yeah. Don't slip Logan. on Levi. Yeah, Logan and I were talking about this earlier and how much pressure is on pitchers. And Logan's a ten-year-old pitcher. Yeah, and um, same. It, it, it's a challenge. I know. Like, how do you guys get through it? So, Levi, I, I hear that you're pretty mentally strong. Like, how do you got? How do you handle the pressure on the mound? Well, for me, pitching has always been much different than hitting for me. Mm-hmm. Just mentally wise. Whenever I'm pitching, it's just like I always think about it like football. 
whenever you're on, I feel like you're on, you have the ball, it's always controllable and just have a better mentality when I have the ball mm-hmm. in my hand and I know, and I know what I can do with it. And whenever, like, let's say the team's chirping in the other dugout or just saying, just being loud and saying some stuff. Mm-hmm. All, just that's just part of baseball, and that's what's gonna happen. So all I just focus on whatever the catcher signs are throwing down. Focus on taking a deep breath and just relaxing and letting letting your training from before do the work. Yeah. And I also have <laughs> it might be a little funny, but I have two different cards that I got mentally from some I work with um mental guy he uh we have mental cards Mm -hmm. so uh, before i go to hit i pull out the mental card in my back pocket read three steps or whatever and then i when i'm in the box i think about those three steps and then what happened that's that's a solid approach what do they say what are the three steps um, number one is see the ball. Number two is hunt the fastball. Number three is uh, be a predator. And then number four was uh, is Pura Vida, which is a Costa Rica term for every, everything and happiness. Hmm. Some serious stuff here. I'm like, impressed. Our listeners and and guys and gals that tune in on YouTube, like you're listening to some serious stuff here. Like, all right, let me ask you guys this question. What's a mound visit a mound visit from Coach Burns like? Who can do the best Eric Burns? Yeah, I can I can try. All right. So <laughs> this is I don't a hard one, did one. I wanna see you did one. So hold up. He'll come he'll come to you through the mound, right? Yeah. And he'll go he always sit like this, he'll go, Dude, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Just 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 let it go, you know? Like, it's fine. Next, next page. It's, you got him. I mean, you're the best, you're the best kid I know. You're, I don't want anyone for this job except for you. So just keep doing what you're doing and you got a defense behind you. That's it. Wow. That's what he does. Exactly what he does. <laughs> the mannerisms were good. Levi, is that pretty spot on? Yeah. For a kid played the outfield most of the time, I think that's pretty spot on. Yeah. Okay. I think that's oh, awesome. So I have a question for you, Jen. Knock it out, dude. Um, uh, do you play any other positions than pitcher? That's for Levi or Jesse? Jen. Oh, I, I play right field. Mainly right. Sometimes center. Some t- like barely, but mostly right field. And spot. out of those positions, um, what is your favorite? Right field, because when there's a hard ground ball, I get to throw them out at first base. And <laughs> and when there's a right-handed batter, if they get like jammed on an inside pitch or something, maybe they'll they'll flare one out to right field, and I could lay out and catch that one. Those are the fun That's ones. Scary, bro. Yeah. On my first base, and I see a ball coming from right field, and all of a sudden the guy running is behind me. Just like you have two different ways to get hit. Yeah, it's not common for you to catch the ball with the runner to your back at base in baseball. At yeah, first, I'll, specifically. I'll, I'll, I'll be in right field, and then Levi will turn around. He'll go. <laughs> yeah, that's what, either yeah. just rocket, cut the home, something like that. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Well, now let, let's let's switch over to hitting. Which one of you two are the better hitter? Jesse is for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Listen, just, that's humility right there, dude. Like I love it. Like all right, Jesse, you can hit the ball too. I can, I I try. I try. Sure. Ah, okay. Some more He's humility. Being hum- He's being humble. He is. He is. <laughs> all right. Well, let me ask you guys this question: How old were you when you hit your first bomb? Either one of you. Mm, I I think it was I was nine and it probably like I was it was little league so I was I was nine I think I was I I was either old nine or just turned ten and I pulled it I went 
I was like halfway through first base and I realized it went over the fence and I was like, I just did that. I just hit a home run. And I was so excited doing, I was, I mean, nine or 10 years old. So I was dancing, jumping around the bases while I was oh, running. So awesome. Super excited. I'm, I'm pretty sure someone has a video if we found it, but it's a yeah. long time ago. I love it. Levi, what about you? Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure my first travel ball home run when I was nine and 10, or I distinctly remember it's nine, 10 years old. Mm-hmm. I, it was, so we I had our uh, quarterfinal game or whatever in bracket play. I I hit a walk off home run on Mother's Day. It was it was in, it was a really awesome moment. Uh, I remember just I remember hitting the ball, thinking it was like because I did not I didn't pimp it and I just <laughs> ran and thought it was like a double or something. Yeah. Then I then I see my fir- our first base coach like cheering. It was just like what, what I did, and then I and then I hear everybody screaming and stuff and the ball went over the fence and I was just shocked it went around it was the walk off home run so I, and I was 9, 10 years old so I was cheering around the bases and stuff and <laughs> yeah doing something I wasn't supposed to probably now I get flamed yeah, yeah I uh, just just I just wanted to say like this has this has nothing to do with my first home run but that made me think of the time where I was playing for the Southern California team uh in the all state select championship mm-hmm. down in Houston. And it was, we play six innings, bottom of the six inning. We were down by three full count. I was up with the bases loaded and it was like storybook, right? Come on. And you dream of these things, these even opportunities. I, I swing as hard as I can. Cause might as well go big or go home. I swear it was the farthest ball I've ever hit. And it goes, <laughs> right back and I, everyone thought it was gone the wind the fog was heavy the wind was blowing straight in I thought I got it for sure I may have may have pimped it maybe and uh, <laughs> and it was it was a fly out and we lost again oh no I, I swear it was the farthest ball I've ever hit and it just went straight back <laughs> he, Logan define to me when he says he pimped it what's that mean um, that means like that means like he probably bat flipped it and um uh and it didn't go over and then that's what pretty much it mean like you thought you did something and then you didn't do it and then you did something when you thought you did it. Right, right. okay. It yeah. was so embarrassing. Jesse, oh. I have a question for you. <laughs> I've seen so I've seen it? MLB players do it though. What I is mean, it, Levi? Go ahead. Uh, to be honest, who do you think has better bat flips, you or Frankie? Frankie does the same one every time. It's me, not even close. Frankie does yeah. the same one. He 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 uh he walks down and then he flip. So he like he's walking out. He's walking and then he goes just like that. But I've done I've done toss. I've done regular flip. I've done throw overhand. I've I've done a lot of them. I've done just just dropping it. I you, think you just, I think you I just got said it, you just said it home and come up with different ones. Yeah, I I, always, I don't think I've done the same one twice. I always oh, that, come up with different. That's ones. it, dude. We're gonna need the footage. All right, we need to, we need video proof. Oh yeah, the fact that you come up with different ones is crazy. Just thinking about hitting a home run and you should <laughs> yeah. do it. Well, you know, no, no, yeah. that's what I do on the on deck. I'm like, like I'm like, what, like, should, how what, do you should, do what celebration should I do today? It's visualizing it before it happens, man. Yeah, that's how that's how things get done. Yeah, when you step up on the mound, I'm about to strike him out right now. He don't even know it yet, but it's coming. Go ahead, Jen. I I know that y'all y'all you boys may not watch much college softball, but I know Coach Aaron, you do. Mm-hmm. We were watching. I think it was Ole Miss South Carolina over the weekend. I think that's the game that it was. The left fielder goes back for a catch, and she just knows she has it. You know, she's on the warning track. It hits the top of her glove and goes over the fence. Home run. <laughs> I've seen that stuff happen. And then, like, she just leaned on the fence. She could just tell. She was like, that just happened. I cannot believe that just happened. I know her heart had to drop. Like, Oh, my gosh. All right. I don't know if they ended up winning or losing the game, but that's never good, a good look. So, oh, and I remember my first home run, Coach Aaron. Oh, yeah. Let's hear it. Um, uh, When I was nine, um, I was playing for my football team, and the kid gave me a cookie. And I hit it uh, deep left center field. Oh, my God. He said the kid gave me a cookie. I don't know. I thought before the game 
They gave him like a Chips Ahoy See, or I something. Thought, dude, <laughs> I think maybe what he's talking about is what we would call a beach ball. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Beach right. ball. Yeah. He, a yeah. really good pitch that I can. Okay. All right. And then, finish your story. And um, I had a good feeling that I was actually going to hit one that game because before the game in batting practice, we were we were on another field mm-hmm. taking BP, and I hit one over. In batting practice, and I and I had a feeling like I'm gonna hit one over in the game, and the guy gives me a good pitch. I swing as hard as I can. I take it um, deep um, over the left center field uh, fence. Mm-hmm. It was a really far ball, and um, I was I was like still like little, so. I was like jumping around. I even hit a I even hit a dance on the uh, running back um coming from third base. I hit the gritty. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I am all for good taste and celebration cuz yeah. it, it celebration you don't have to, that's not rubbing it into your opponent. Like take take pride and credit for what you just did. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Some people like take that offensively. Like celebrating yeah. after you do something good or something. Yeah. It's Look, like I mean, you would have done the same thing. Come on. Yeah. Well, you know, you, I've heard some criticism to some of the MLB players, especially I think it was last year we saw a little bit more celebrating and um I heard some criticism about it and I'm like that's what makes the game fun. Yeah. Like the game, if the game is played so seriously, like then you're gonna, you're not gonna have the viewers, nor the followers, and that's, you know, that's where the bananas come in. We'll just take all the people that got bored, and you know, we'll move on. But all right, this is good stuff here. All right, well, look, Captain Obvious, um, which one of you two are Captain Obvious? Oh well, literally Levi. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Over some time with my older team, just as always, my dad made that nickname called Captain Obvious after a while. After that, this one commercial from, uh, I think it was either Capital One or something, he was mm-hmm. just like the Captain Obvious guy or whatever. Oh, I think I've seen that commercial. Yeah, he just got that from there and started calling me that. And my teammates started calling me that. What's the traits? Why did your dad think that was a good name for you? I said... I say a lot of obvious stuff sometimes when pointed out when I think when I sometimes I think just as like people don't even like just to make sure people know that and just is very obvious stuff and just who I am it now. All right. So in, in the bio that your dad sent, it, it says that you watch a lot of ML or MLB network, right? Yeah. Um, um, that just sounds just like in a, you may you may be good at broadcasting because broadcasting I get so irritated with those captain obvious questions <laughs> does it feel good knowing that you just won the championship really no, captain it's obvious terrible. <laughs> like i mean but like sometimes they do that stuff does it feel good that you just won this this world series <laughs> nah, it's ter- yeah. i just want one player to say no nah, that just sucks this is awful. I know it. Like this is terrible. Go go interview someone else. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, you guys brought up Frankie. So Frankie was on the show with us. Hey, tell yeah, me about this. That. Tell me about this four hundred and sixty five foot home run he hit in Houston. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I want to say something. So, Jen, look twelve at, years old, four hundred and sixty five foot. I'm pretty sure if you look at Eric's no Eric Eric, uh, no, it's either on Let Them Play Baseball or it's. Eric Burns on posts ball. on Instagram. You mm-hmm. can see he hits the homer, and then if you look on second base, I just stand there and I just look at. It. I don't even run. I just stand there. I I I literally just stared straight at it for a good three seconds, and then I decided to run. Was, yeah. I, uh, was I that mean, a captain it, like, obvious moment there? Like his obvious well, the gone. Yeah, captain obvious that he was gone already. I he hit it, and I was like, I immediately knew he was gone because hit it so hard, and the fences were only like. 265, so way out. Yeah. Way out. It's in the trees. He hit it almost through two fields. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny because I went I went to a I went to a Padre game like two days ago and I I I looked in the outfield and I said 
Frankie's Homer would have won the second deck. Really? Yeah. I was it's like, true. I looked at it and I'm like, it really went that far? Wow. Yeah. It's crazy to see. I, I've talked with some people that I know and just they've seen the video and stuff and mm-hmm. they, they, they don't believe it even went 300 plus feet based on just the way a 12 year old can hit that far. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's grown man stuff there. I mean, yeah, I remember. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Leave out. I remember watching it in the uh, dugout, and I've seen Frankie hit some far home runs before. And I see this one, I was like, "Oh, this one's going to be like maybe three, three seventy, three eighty, which is still really far." So far. And then I, and then I see it go over this the batting cage that we were hitting, and and just I was like, oh my god, that's got to be 400 plus feet because our field was at least 300 feet to left, and like the fields are oddly dimensions, like 300 to left, like 250 to right, like 260 to center, and then Two, I remember so the right field would be the right field was further? 50 feet shorter than left field. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I remember. It was so weird. Yeah. Now, and then now he like, for the critics, though, like that says he didn't hit it that far. How did you measure the distance of that? <laughs> it was his dad. He's checked it. I, oh. I don't believe it was that accurate, but I believe it was still 400. Plus. It, it was it was definitely I'd say from 445 to 460. Yeah. I, I'd say that that seems about right. Yeah. Because no. I don't. Yeah. yeah. Still about like 80 feet farther than I could hit it. And it wasn't even a fast pitcher. If he would, if he was a fast pitcher and he would have got one, it's going 500 feet. <laughs> Something with Frankie and hanging sliders and curveballs. Yeah. Like he he hit one in the I think it was October or November or something. He hit one uh, these Huntington Beach fields. He uh, it went so it went to the first so like the fields were like diagonal to each other or whatever, mm-hmm. and he hit it to what which would have been if it extended. The, uh, the foul line of first base on the other field mm. to re- to left field. And it almost went over these like trees that were in left field and there's like a gate or whatever. It w- I remember watching it. <laughs> it still wasn't as far as the one he hit in Houston, but like just, is it, is it nope. just superpowers? Like what would I mean, he, is he eat Wheaties so. or something? You should see, you should see this guy in person. He'll sit down and his thighs are just huge. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a big kid. He's a big yeah, kid. Gotta, yeah. yeah. Like because he's like I know I've seen some bigger kids in our age group, but he's he's still big, looks like five nine, five ten. And he just like the way he his body like works in his legs because he's a catcher, so mm-hmm. stuff. So he works a lot on his legs. Mm-hmm. He's just the way his legs are built and how he's his body and stuff, it's just it's like you think he's like a just an O line football player just ready to just truck you. <laughs> yeah, he he's, he's he's bigger than me, but we're we're about the same height. I might be like half inch, quarter inch taller. Wow. Okay. Barely. <sighs> All right. Well, you guys are California boys. Let's just say you do not get drafted out of high school. Where are you going to college? UCLA. No. <laughs> At the same time. Ah, okay. we uh we uh coach Eric did a it was a he took us to the field because he's a UCLA alumni or mm-hmm. whatever and he, we were we were cherished with the opportunity to go to their practice field and watch a inner squad of theirs and practice on like their old mini field or whatever and head in their mm-hmm. cages and just wa- just watching that and do just being there in general felt so good just knowing that could be me and could be Jesse one day yeah. if we keep doing that and I distinctly remember this, this guy oh, yeah. the center fielder he absolutely robbed the home run literally like almost five like yeah, he three like, four or he five like feet Bo Jackson scaled the wall jumped up and grabbed it it was crazy really yeah yeah, yeah Bo Jackson yeah there's a lot of people who don't know who Bo Jackson is these days. That's a shame. Wow. Yeah. You'd be a football fan, you know him, and you'd be a baseball fan, you still know. I know. Bo knows. You're right. Or you can just, you know, 
What was Bo? Yeah, Bo knows. That was that night. Mm, yeah, I feel like I it think was. It was. I think it was. Oh well. All right. You two dudes are very impressive, Logan. You got a final question for these guys? Or are we ready to roll to our last question? Um. What is um? What is like? What gets your mindset good? Like, what is? What gets you pumped up before the game? No, yeah. Um, for me, I'm a huge fan of listening to music. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. I love listening to music before games. It could be whatever I'm feeling or whatever situation might be. Either from rock, country, rap, doesn't really, whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Or taking, You're on the West Coast, so you better be listening to like '90s rap. Like none yeah, of this stuff. None of this stuff today. It's, it's Tupac, not good. Ice Cube. There you go. Stuff like that. There you go. But either either that, or I take just deep breaths and closing my eyes and just thinking about good situations and situations that could happen in the game, depending on what team we might play or something like that. Cool. Visualize. All right, Jesse, what's your pregame routine? Like, like he said, listen to music. Uh, I love listening to music. Like, uh, for me, I was always a, I was always an Eminem guy. Uh, okay. But now I'm now I like more the new people, like the new, oh. like the new rap. Little but Uzi. I, I'll, I'll, little, I'll still hunt. I, I was I like the people that I like right now are I I doubt you heard them but Who? Ken Car uh, Ken Carson uh, I'll listen to Is he a rapper Play Playboy Cardi yeah they're okay, all okay I, I believe that one's a a rapper and then Travis Scott. Okay, and, I know and, who that is. Well, and those are pretty much like my favorites. And then okay. Eminem. Yeah. Gotcha. And then um I have one more question for you guys. Um, like, is there anything like 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 special that you guys do like before the game? Like like when you're at the field, like not when you're in the car, like getting your mindset right. Like what are you thinking when you're at the field? Like when you're facing a good team and like a server position? Yeah. And you have to like get the sun right now and you have to do a really good job. Like what do you guys like think for the game? You wanna take that one, Jesse, or should I? Oh I got it. Uh I'll in my head, I like to kinda like make fun of them. In my head I'll be like, look at this guy. He's terrible. He's throwing so slow. That's easy. That's over the fence already before he even knows what happened. Stuff like that. And then someone will run or something. I'll be like, he's so slow. Take off the paint off your back. Something like that. Because yeah. then it gets my confidence up and then confidence is key. Um, my mindset or superstition, whatever it is, just... They're all, we're, they're all playing. They're all the same age as us until we get to high school and play varsity or things like that. Mm -hmm. They're all the same age, and we're all we're all going through different things. So whatever, whatever, whatever we're focusing on, we're doing doesn't. We're not being influenced by them if they're talking any trash or anything like that. There's nothing. Just get our team and yourself as ready as possible before. And if when, like, I know this quote's old and stuff, but you're always battling yourself and whatever you're just, yeah. That is very, very, very true. Jen, what do you think of these two? I want to tell Logan what my pregame superstition was. Oh, yes. She she never <laughs> changed her socks. Did you know that? I'm just kidding. It's not true. No, that's not <laughs> it. It's, it's way less cool. Um, so we went through our pregame warm-up. We were out there as a team. The very last thing that I did was I would lay on the ground. I was a catcher. So I'd lay on the ground, and I'd throw one leg over the top, and my athletic trainer would come, and she would pop my back. And then I'd throw the other leg over, and she'd pop my back. And if I if it didn't pop... I would flip out. I was like, wait, come back. Like, we got to we gotta get a good pop out of this. So I'd have to get in the position to where my back would pop, and then I could go on. That was my so superstition. No, po no pop, no performance? <laughs> yep. No pee, no pee. Mm. <laughs> that was my so, superstition. Go ahead, Levi. 
Also, something our old t- my old team used to do before bracket days or championship days, our whole team would go lay out in the outfield, just lay on the ground with our hat over our head, and our coach would give us meditation stuff and just good mindset tools and just think in your head and stuff, visualize. And I thought it was just a superstition, and that we all that we did whenever we did that, we all we always played well. You know, it's just yeah. a funny thing that we did. You know what? I need a time machine. I need to go back. I know. Like, like oh, how great God. would that be, Logan? Look, I know you got a lot of growing to do. I need you to learn how to build a time machine and um, get a flux capacitor, and because we need, I need, <laughs> I need to go back in time. I know, um, just so I can play oh, with these God. dudes. You know, you know, I wish we could do. I okay. wish I, um, I wish we were able to go through a TV and go into a movie like Back to the Future and just steal that capacity, um, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. And, um, get the DeLorean. The DeLorean, <laughs> for TV. real. Yeah. And then, whew, that'd be amazing. You know, I wouldn't change much, but I do want to play ball again. Like, I, 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 I just did. I sell. I sold myself short. If I acted and thought like these two guys right here, I know. I know. You know I might still be playing. Yeah. In a retirement league. I was gonna say you're a little bit past your prime <laughs> at this point. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I can, I, I can always dream. So you can dream. All right, guys. Well, look, we let you start the show off, and we're gonna let you finish the show. So at the end of every show, um. No, 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 no. I got one more question to ask. Yeah, you do. Logan, you you about to let me slip up. You got you got to catch me on that kind of stuff. This this is your question. All right. Here this is this is definitely the hardest uh, hardest question we're going to ask you today. All right, you ready? I like how they both sit up yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they're like I like that. Until I tell them the question. All right, you're walking up to bat. All right, both of you are, are in on deck circle. All right, got to visualize it. You about you about to step up to the plate and hit a swamp donkey. Do y'all call home runs out there swamp donkeys? Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, another term for them. Okay. okay. No, well, no. I, I learned that term, so it, it, it stuck in my head. Anyway, you're walking up to the plate. What's your walkout music? <laughs> Levi, we're going to let you go first. Probably something... I'm not a huge fan of just like something like loud and very upbeat. Probably something like more chill and just smooth. Like some, I don't really know what genre it would be or whatever, but just something. There's multiple different songs I would like. Probably um, just one particular song. It's one like one of the two Ice Cube songs. Either it was a good day. I know that one sounds famous, and the other one's uh, you know how we do it by Ice Cube. There you go. Just oh. a, this he, dude is trying to like like he he's in soul. He's in got my heart. This dude is talking Ice Cube West Coast good gangster answer. rap. Yeah, Listen, I'm, I'm in the nineties. In the nineties, I was all about it, dude, and and I still am to this day. My I've been listening to DMX all weekend out in my garage, so. Me and my son been barking. All right, Jesse, <laughs> what were you going to say? First of all, I was just going to say, like, Levi's more uh, inland San Diego. I'm more, like, by the beach and by the city. Like, I could drive, like, 10, maybe eight minutes to go to, like, downtown San Diego. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe 15 minutes to the beach. But anyways, to the, to the songs, uh, I was more, like... More probably more hype music, but if I had to choose two songs, I would choose "Dark Fantasy" by Kanye West, or you probably you're not gonna know this one, but this is for like the probably twelve to fourteen year olds that we're gonna watch. This is uh, "MDMA" by Ken Carson, "Destroy Lonely." I would use that song. MDNA. MDMA. M D M M A. Okay. And it's about what's his name? Carson? Ken Carson. Ken Carson. All right, let me put this in my phone just so I don't I'm I'm gonna have to look this one up. I know. Ken Carson. I w I wouldn't play it out loud. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got him right here. I got him. What's all right, which song should I listen to? 
If the I want to hear I, his best, which one is it? His best song? His most popular is probably Fight of My Demons, but mm-hmm. the my favorite is probably... Yeah, pro- pro- honestly, probably Fighting My Demons is my favorite. All right, that's his number one song fun. right here in our Apple Apple Music. Apple, we, we would love to have you as a sponsor. I'm talking about your product <laughs> here on the show. All right. Now, we're at the end. So, at the end of every show, uh, we take just a few minutes. And first of all, I want to hear how we can find you on social media. After that, I'm going to thank everyone for listening and, <clears throat> and all that fun stuff. And then at the end, I'm going to say, until next time. And you're going to say, we will catch you on the slot. Got to do this in unison. You guys got it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should write this down. <laughs> we will catch you on the slide. That's all you got to know. We will, we catch, you will catch you on the slide. We will catch you on the slide. That's right. Yeah. Logan's got it. Oh, he's typing notes. The other one's writing notes. I got it. I got it. Do you, you got it. Freaking keyboards are so loud. I know. I, I'm in. I, no. I'm in. I closed out the wrong tab on accident. I was trying to close out my notes tab, and I closed out my, the actual tab. <laughs> you from fifth grade come in the room? No, it was my dad said, what happened? And I said, I closed the wrong tab. I'm back, though. All right. So, but at the very end, I'm going to say I'll catch you on the slide, right? Mm-hmm. You guys got it? Jen, got- it's bedtime over here. It is. Sorry. <laughs> Jen, Jen's yawning. It's 846 here. It's 846. 546. Look, Logan, this is like Back to the Future. These guys are still living yep. in our past. So it like, is. We, we can it's tell so- them what happens. I was confused because I thought it was like dark. Who wins the Padre game? <laughs> <laughs> Who are they playing? St. Louis. I'm going tomorrow. I don't know. All right. Where, how can we find you guys on social media? Levi, you go first. Uh, you can find me at Levi Wolf 35 on Instagram. And you can find me at Levi uh, underscore Wolf on TikTok. Okay. You can find me at Jesse James Maddox one on Instagram. And I don't use TikTok and I'm not saying it my Snapchat or anything. I'll no, yeah, yeah, we don't need that. Yeah, we don't need Good that. Good idea. Jesse James. <laughs> I like that. that that's, yeah, that's my uh, full name, Jesse like James Maddox. That's Dude, you got like that's a movie star name there. My my mom, I think, was trying to go after the the cowboy dude, Jesse James. Oh yeah, <laughs> know exactly who that is. All right, well, look, thank you guys for hanging in there with us this entire time. Um, look these two dudes up. Um, great role models for for younger kids and uh, true ballers at that. So uh, amazing guest tonight. Um, but thank you guys again. Make sure you please go subscribe to us on YouTube, Apple, iTunes, Google. Po- oh, no, Google Podcast is gone now. Um, all the Spotify, all the different things. Come follow us, share, recommend. And if you got a baller out there that's got something they want to talk about, send them our way. But until next time, guys, we will catch you, catch on, you the on the slide. All right. That's it. We thank you for toughing it out and pushing through. Now, let's go teach the world great sportsmanship, leadership, to go inspire someone through your dedication and excitement for the game. Make sure to smash the like and follow button on all social media at the Slide Podcast Show and the Slide Pod on Twitter. Plus, leave us a review and feedback. Until next time. Until next time. We'll catch you on the slide. On the slide. slide. slide.